Home prices had risen dramatically in Toronto, Vancouver, San Francisco, Hong Kong, London, and many other cities. All of this has been fueled by low interest rates. We see debt rising. We see credit card debt at the highest on record. Mortgage debt destroying people. And guess what? There's no way out of this mess. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at real estate, interest rates, I want to take a look at Canada, the US, and so much more. Let's begin. Home buyers in the red hot San Francisco real estate market appear to be unfazed by stock market volatility and tax law changes. The median sale price of a house in the city soared to $1.6 million in the first quarter. That's a 24% jump from a year earlier. Understand what has happened to this city. One of the most expensive cities in the world. San Francisco's real estate prices have been rising and rising and rising. It is one of those few cities that is far outpacing the rest. Many individuals who work in this area absolutely cannot afford to live there. At $1.6 million, the average individual would need to work two lifetimes to be able to afford that. And that's if they didn't buy anything else their entire life. It is entirely unaffordable to pay $1.6 million for a home for the average person. Yet the prices may continue to rise. In certain areas, affluent areas of these big cities, these prices are continuing to rise, even though we see in some cases the market has come down. As interest rate rise, that's when we're going to have a very, very big issue. All right. Let's see what's happening in cold Toronto. The high end of Toronto's real estate market is bearing the brunt of declines from last year's dizzying growth with prices falling and unit sales slumping by almost half. Sales of detached homes in and around Canada's biggest city fell 46% in March, the same uh, month a year ago, right? So that's a major, major fall. They didn't want this to happen. They said it wouldn't happen, but here we are today. While the average price fell 17% to $1 million, according to the data released, the Toronto Real Estate Board, I won't get into the political side of that, but anyway, that dragged down the average selling prices for all housing types by 14% from a year earlier to 784000 the biggest drop since 1991. Quite significant here. Imagine, first of all, the fact that the average price is a million dollars. Okay? The, that's the average price, but the average person can't afford that. And that's when you know you have a problem. So there's one point that I wanted to discuss. How do you determine if real estate prices are affordable are they expensive? What are the factors we need to discuss? And the number one indicator is calculate how much the average person earns and calculate how much the average home costs. That's it. It's the most important indicator by far. And it's obvious why. So if you want to know, is that home on the end of the street worth buying? Yes or no? If you want to know, is the market at its peak? Or is it at least far overvalued? And these are, you know, just one of many. All right, this, this particular indicator. But I do believe that it is one of the most important, if not the most important. All right. 
Now, what I've noticed here in Toronto specifically is that there are certain areas that are doing better than ever. But it's getting less and less and less. That, you know, pool of expensive homes is shrinking. Be aware of averages and then when you really take it more specifically. On the right hand side here, a one percentage point increase in interest rates would add twelve hundred dollars that's Canadian in annual debt service cost to the average Alberta household. So it's specific on that. Compared with eleven hundred in BC and one thousand in Ontario. Households in the rest of the country would see debt services cost rise eight hundred or less. The point I'm trying to make here is that, first of all, Canadian household debt levels among the highest in the developed world. If we see interest rates continuing this policy of their slowly but surely method of increasing rates, we are going to have a disaster waiting for us. Because as this rises, even if this is, let's say, 2%, once it goes on that trajectory up to this 4%, maybe 5% territory of the central bank, we are going to have an absolute disaster. And these numbers here, even if it's 4%, historically is not high. We are so, so low right now. And unfortunately, most people in extreme amounts of debt, they have variable mortgages, variable debt all throughout, and that's obviously going to rise considerably. Average liabilities per household. Okay, look at this here. It's insane. Breaking it down, I mean, you can get the average here at 140, this is in the thousands of dollars. But, you know, taking here, I mean, just, just look at this, 103 for Ontario. It's just so extreme, whether it is your mortgage, whether it's other liabilities, it doesn't matter how expensive things are, how much things really cost today has risen so much, you know, prior to last year, five years ago, and so on. They call it inflation, but if you look at the government-provided statistics of inflation, it's a total lie. Debt service payments, average annual debt service payment per household in the thousands of dollars. This is a very big issue because ultimately, as interest rates rise, these get bigger. And maybe they don't affect you today, but perhaps they will affect you tomorrow. There is no other way around that. You have to pay up, all right? And then this. Homeowners ditch refinancings as mortgage rates rise. We are looking here, if I'm not mistaken, this is for the US, but the principle generally applies everywhere because globally interest rates are very, very low. You're not going to be able to necessarily adjust that without printing money. If you print money, that's going to devalue the currency and so on. Refinancing makes refinancings make up a smaller portion of the mortgage business than at any time in the past two decades, posing a challenge for lenders who are already fear higher interest rates and climbing house prices could eventually depress purchase activity. Last year, 37% mortgage origination volume was because of refinancings. That is the smallest proportion since 1995, and the number is expected to shrink this year. It goes on. Look at what happens. You have different methods, basically. Give people homes that they simply can't afford, subprime, right? And that can boost sales, that can make people borrow to extreme levels. And so it's a good policy if you're a banker. 
you can also decrease interest rates. And this makes it very cheap for people to borrow. And that's what they did. As they saw the housing crisis unfolding, they started to act. And that didn't really do much because prices were quite depressed. Things have been changing. Like I said, San Francisco, even you know, look at Canada, Toronto, Vancouver. But ultimately what we see is a problem that they can't fix. And that's the point I try to make. I try to make it all the time, and sometimes I rant on. But essentially, we're talking about, you know, this is a perfect image right here. The Titanic heading towards the iceberg. And you know it's coming. You're heading straight for it, but you don't do anything about it. That's not It's not going to end well because there is so much at stake. This ship here, the trillions of dollars heading towards that iceberg and ultimately causes a snowball effect, even if it's just one area. That's what people refuse Think about, I mean, just think about it. When you look at subprime, right? This subprime was a contained issue, they told us. Just subprime, don't worry. We boxed it in. We got you covered. But it didn't happen like that. It spilled over. It spilled over in every direction. And that caused a huge issue. We started finding out about all these different derivatives. We started hearing about all the fraud and everything else and that shows us today what's really going on behind the scenes it's much much worse than they're telling us anyway that's all for this video i'll just leave you with the message that keep a very close eye on what's happening with interest rates with mortgages with the debt levels it's not sustainable that causes a snowball effect and at some point all we need is that spark and this is all going to come down wait for the spark and uh, i would say prepare in advance definitely if you found the video informative please give me a thumbs up when you give me a thumbs up it helps to support this channel so i do appreciate that very much now if you want to Take a look at my books. All you got to do is go to the links in the description. It'll bring you over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of the books to see if you like them. Take care.